So today we're going to be working on this Xbox One X, which I bought off eBay. I paid £50 for this, and the fault in the description is no display. So if I just pop up the description here on the screen, you'll see that I paid £50, £7.65 postage. It's the Xbox One X, one terabyte, and it says here that it's able to power on, but it's not able to display a picture. So solders faulty, blah, 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 all of the usual stuff. But £57.95, or £57.65, sorry, I should be able to make around about £50 profit on this if I'm able to fix it. So, yeah, it's it's not in the greatest condition, I'll be honest, which is why I'm kind of downvaluing it a little bit. Generally, you get about 120 130 for this British pounds, but this isn't in great condition. I can change the top, though. I can change this top plate if I manage to get it working. It does turn on. I have actually got it turned on right now. And I have already tried it on the uh, capture card and it's not working, but I'll just show you that just to verify. So if I plug the HDMI port in or HDMI cable in and switch over, we have an old signal. So this is my Elgato capture card. I know this is working because it's the same cable that I use for my microscope and it was working absolutely fine five minutes ago on another job. So absolutely no issues there but it's not displaying on the screen and that can be down to realistically one of four things so it could be the hdmi port itself which is obviously going to be you know it's going to be the most obvious thing that people go for the hdmi ports on these obviously you know with wear and tear people constantly plugging and unplugging them and things like that and be really careless they do get broken but this one does look in pretty mint condition from what i can tell with the eye so i don't think it's going to be the hdmi port it could also be the HDMI read driver. So the read driver, the part number for that is TDP158, and that's basically a video MUX chip, an audio and video MUX chip. It takes the signals from the APU, it converts them from display port, which is what the APU puts out, and converts them into HDMI, and then that sends it out to the TV. So it could be that HDMI read driver. That's very, very common. It's one of the most common issues on these. It's also a big common issue for no power as well when the chip goes bad sometimes it can cause no power but if it's not that then it could be the esdic so the esdic you can't actually buy brand new you can buy them on my online store by the way consolefix.shop but the esdic u25 i think it is top of my head i think it's u25 it's a small little bga ic and it's responsible for protecting the circuit so if you get for example a power surge because of lightning strike it will normally take out the ESDIC before it takes out the APU. So the ESDIC is basically just a bunch of ESD suppression diodes and basically if they go bad it causes a short on the chip and that prevents it from actually outputting the, uh, the signals that it needs and the power rails that it needs to actually power the HDMI circuit. So it could be that. The ESD uh, ESD suppression IC, the uh, HDMI boost IC, whatever you want to call it, that's going to be the worst case scenario for the most part, for mo most of the time. Occasionally we'll get it where it'll be the APU, but that's like one in a thousand, you know, it's not, it's really not that common at all. So that's going to be worst case scenario because they are pretty expensive. I do sell them, which I've taken off donor boards on my online store. So you can check that out, the links are in the description for that if you do need them. And also if you do need a repair as well, you can book those in on the website as well. The best case scenario is either going to be TDP158 or the hard drive. Because the hard drive can cause no display, it can cause a black screen or completely no display at all because the software is on the hard drive and that can cause the... Uh, console to not be able to fire up the dashboard or not fire up the green screen a lot of the time the hard drive just generally causes a black screen and you know the display will actually initialize, uh, initiate but it just won't output any video if that makes sense but anyway enough rambling if you are new to the channel my name is Dakota I'm an electronics technician and I mainly focus on games consoles but I do other work too so if you've got a laptop uh, a tablet a MacBook a uh, games console, anything like that that needs repairing and you need someone to do it for you, then get in touch. Links are all in the description, consolefix.shop, you can get in touch with me over there and I'll be happy to try and repair your device for you, as long as you give me some of your hard-earned money. But anyway, let's get this thing apart, hopefully I can get it fixed so I can get it resold and make some profit.
By the way, don't forget to subscribe because I'll be really sad if you do. It turns out around about 65% of people who watch these videos are not subscribed. We're getting close to 100,000 subscribers and it would be absolutely awesome if you hit subscribe. Just make me feel that little bit more popular. You know, you know the drill. You know, this one. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I think I'm going to scrap this top case. It's not in the greatest of conditions. I didn't notice that in the description, but I'm really not that bothered about it. You know, even if it wasn't in the description or anything like that, I'm really not that bothered. I've got stacks of these cases lying around and no one seems to want to buy them, so I might as well get some use out of at least one of them. Okay, we are in like Flynn. So... This looks like it's never been worked on, which is obviously great news. That gives me more confidence in my success rate on this. The problem with a lot of these consoles, especially when you buy them on eBay, it is a big risk. You know, the consoles have usually been worked on, um, especially consoles, and it seems to be a lot of amateurs who work on them a lot of the time. So. It's always good to get one where no one's attempted a repair and this one doesn't appear to have been taken apart. All of the screws seem to have been set up pretty much what I would have expected in terms of torque. So I would say that this has never had a repair, which is great. That's good for me. It is an original drive. I will take a look at the SATA cable that's in there because there's two variants of SATA cable. There's one by Foxconn, which is the good one. And then there's an Amphenol cable, which is the crappy one. And the Amphenol cables fail. So whenever I see an Amphenol cable, I always change it and scrap the Amphenol cable. And that is Amphenol. Yeah, that's going to be changed. So I will swap that out. I have a feeling it's probably going to be the encoder so i'm just going to scan around the hdmi circuit first and just see you know can i see anything in terms of bad readings with the multimeter and stuff like that before i do anything with the hard drive or the hard drive caddy or anything like that but that amphenol cable if i've got one hopefully i have but if i've got a foxconn one i will swap that out i will have a look for one Problem is they're in short supply because everyone's after the Foxconn cables. Let's just get rid of that. And yep, that is factory thermal paste. That's good. No prior repair attempt on the HDMI circuit by the look of it. Let's just let's just do the most satisfying thing first, shall we? The most satisfying thing about these repairs is getting this thermal paste off this heatsink. Oh yeah. My favourite part of any repair. So this console, it doesn't appear to have had much use, which is why I don't think it's going to be anything to do with the hard drive. I mean, those Amphenol cables do fail, but I don't think it's going to be anything to do with the hard drive because it doesn't appear to have had much use. We'll deal with that thermal paste later on. All right, so under the microscope then, there's a couple of tests that we can do in terms of the HDMI circuit, which is going to give us a pretty definitive uh, diagnosis on this so if you look here we've got this chip called tdp 158 that's the hdmi read driver i was referring to and this particular test isn't definitive if it reads good so if it, if this cap here c50 reads around about 10,000 ohms it can still have a bad hdmi read driver if it reaches or if it reads you know sort of like a thousand ohms 1500 ohms something like that then that's generally a definitive uh, conclusion it's generally going to be the encoder or the esd i see we're actually getting a fairly decent reading there well it's not actually it's not great so we should be expecting around about 10,000 ohms and apart from scratching the board I'm seeing two and a half thousand ohms there. So it could still be the chip. Let's just have a look over here. So this NFD chip here, this is also a common cause. And there I'm getting overload. It could be the ESDIC. Yeah, it could be this. This is going to give me the same reading as C50 because it's connected directly to it. C14 shouldn't be overload. 
it should give me a reading there. So C14, if we go into continuity mode, C14 is going to connect directly to pin 19. Uh, sorry, is it 19 or 18? 18, sorry. So that is a 5 volt rail. So we should expect a reading there. So you see that's connected. And we should expect a reading. If we go into diode mode, red probe on ground, and check pin 18, we do get 0.59 on pin 18. So 0.59 volt drop to ground, but in resistance mode, oh, now we're getting a reading, what? Okay, now we're getting 4.7 million ohms. Yeah, again, that's way too high. So, I mean, I think the best thing to do is to use my HDMI tester, actually. So I've got a little device which I can plug into it, which is going to allow me to quickly fault find it. Um, I do sell the one in the online store. Uh, yes, I know, I'm a big shill, but they are really, really good devices. So, this is them here. It's the HDMI tester. And this is going to give me a quick diagnosis. So, let's just get rid of this thermal paste, and I'll put some fresh thermal paste on, just so I can plug the thing in. I'm just going to pop some thermal pasta on there. I should have probably done this while it was still inside the housing. You know, it could have given me a better indication. But I would have had to change the thermal paste no matter what. I wouldn't sell this console without replacing the thermal paste. Doesn't look like HDMI is enabling at all. That could be the hard drive. So we've not got 5 volt or EDID as well as the data lines as well. I'm wondering if that could very well be the hard drive. Hmm. Oh, hang on. That's just activated. That took a long time to activate. That took an awful long time to activate. Right, rather than unplugging my microscope, I'm going to try on the TV. So I'll go over to Ugly Cam. You'll know why in a second. Yeah. Okay. It's not enabling at all. So even though we've got the signals there, it's not working. But that did take an awful long time to activate. It could very well be the hard drive. So now that's turned on, now it's working. I think what I'm gonna do is get another hard drive to try. Um, there we go, okay, let's just plug that in. Let's just see how long it takes to actually enable the HDMI circuit now. So that's just turning on. A lot quicker a hell of a lot quicker in fact no nothing okay so I've got no reason to believe it's the hard drive then it could still be the cable so I do have a Foxconn cable here for the 1x so let's just pop that in and we'll try that Let's use my test drive, one that I know works. Just eliminate as many variables as I can. So obviously this would load into safe mode because there's no operating system on it, but I just want to eliminate a variable. You know, if the cable is bad and the hard drive is bad and I try using that hard drive with a good cable, you know, there's a chance that it's not going to load. So I'd rather just eliminate that, that chance and just use a non-good drive. Nope. Absolutely nada. All right, so not the hard drive then. Well, it was worth a shot. So it's not necessarily the um, ESDIC, but it does concern me just given the reading that I had. Uh, you know, 5 million ohms is very high, and it shouldn't be that high. But I don't want to change the ESDIC if I don't have to. And the reason for that is because number one into BGAIC. So that would mean having to reball a replacement and it would mean that I've got to waste, well, or, well, pretty much waste a 40 pound IC if it doesn't work. I mean, yes, I could reuse the other one, but then I've got to reball that as well. It's just wasting time. So I'm going to stick with the cheaper option to start with and try replacing the HDMI encoder. So these are pretty thick boards. And for that reason, I'm going to go pretty high on the 
heat, I'm going to go 480 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow, sorry, 60% airflow to remove this IC. I'm not going to be re reusing this IC, so I don't really care about damaging it with heat. I just want to remove it. So if you've got no, re no intention to reuse the IC, then why care about damaging it? So I'm just going to tin this area. So I'll replace these, the solder that's here with leaded solder. There we go. So a brand new IC, brand new genuine IC I should point out because there's a lot of fakes going around. I've had so many of these chips fake in the past, uh, especially during COVID, we couldn't get them and we were forced to buy them from China. And there were so many fakes, fakes around, it was just unreal. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of some of this excess. So the chip's not soldered properly yet. So I'm going to press down on the chip. Hold and wait, and now I can solder it properly. I always make a point to just flick upwards on the chip on these just to try and get some solder on the sides of them. There we go. Okay, let's clean up. So use some 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. Alright, so that's nicely aligned there. Uh, it's very slightly out by a couple of mil on this side, but it should be fine. Mm, it's a little bit too far out there. So the chip needs to come down slightly. Okay, just clean it again and then I can inspect it again. You know what? That's absolutely fine. Yeah, we're within tolerance there. We're within tolerance there and there. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. All right, for the time being, let's not worry about the thermal paste. There's enough on there to keep it cool enough to do what I need to do. So the one weird thing with this was how long it took to actually activate the HDMI tester the first time. Let's have a look with the HDMI tester first. Is it going to enable? It is pretty quickly as well. Okay. It did enable pretty darn quickly. So is it going to work on the capture card? That be the question. Hey, there we go. It is in low resolution, but it is working. So, because it's in low resolution, it could be that it's got a bad HDMI, uh, bad ESDIC as well. But I guess we'll find out in a minute when I swap the hard drive back over to the normal one, so as it can actually boot. And no, I don't recommend unplugging it while it's got uh, unplugging the hard drive while it's got power going through. Okay, let's let that boot up with that hard drive. So this is the Foxconn cable, by the way. That's going to stay there. So I'm going to leave that Foxconn cable in. Okay, we have an E105 error code. I am going to have to put the disk drive back in. It looks like we've got to reinstall the software. I'm going to put the fan on as well because it will overheat before it gets to reinstall the software. So that's pretty much reassembled how it would be inside the housing now. And spin. There we go. One thing I have just realised is I don't have a sync button, which means... I can't sync a controller. So I'm gonna to have to put this back inside the housing. Right, so I've not secured anything in, but that is together enough just to be able to get this thing tested and working. But I haven't secured anything at all. It's a little bit how you're doing at the minute. In fact, it's a lot how you're doing at the minute. So now I can sync a controller. There we go. 
And there we go. Cool. Okay. So, I'm going to see if this wants to continue. Uh, no, E105. So, let's go troubleshoot. Remove everything. Let's try that first. And E102. We're going to need to do a full software reinstallation. Okay. Well, never mind. So, I've got the Lazy Sosu one already on my external hard drive it's supposed to be a portable ssd but it's still usb speeds i did forget to connect up the wi-fi card so i'm just connecting that up now yeah i should be able to hot plug that yeah there we go troubleshoot and no offline system update is enabled so let's start that and no ha uh okay that is also a failing hard drive that sucks that sucks a big one. Yep, stuck on 0%. So not only has the HDMI encoder failed. Wow, look at all this mess here while I was looking for that USB. Let's just push it all to one side and pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> anyway, now that that doesn't exist anymore. So not only did it have a HDMI encoder that had failed, which was very obvious that the HDMI encoder had failed because... It didn't work with the SSD. It still didn't give a display, right? So not only had it had or has it had a failing HDMI encoder, it's also got a failing hard drive. That sucks a big one because that means that we've got to put more money into it. I mean, granted, yes, it's fine in terms of, you know, hard drive really doesn't cost much. But the more we have to put into it to get this working, the less we make off it, the less profit. And that is ultimately what it's all about. So let's get rid of that hard drive. Still going to use this Foxconn one just to try it. Okay, let's try again. This will probably attempt to boot something up. It'll probably have a green screen and then it will probably go into safe mode. Sometimes it will work just right off the bat. Preparing console. Oh, it might work. Considering there's no user data on there. Okay, it's just rebooting. Uh, E106, yeah, okay. Well, there we go. So, it looks like it is actually allowing the operating system to go through on this one. It did get past 0%. So, I'm just going to plug in my controller again. I forgot to plug the Wi-Fi module in again. I've just hot plugged it. Okay, let's see. There we go. Okay, yeah, that's going through. So I'm going to let this run. I'm going to let it update, and I'll fast forward through this because it's going to take about 10 minutes. Okay, here we go. So that's installed. So I'm going to run through the setup now. Just make sure it all works. Make sure it's not banned. I'm going to log into my account, etc. So we're going to go for English, United Kingdom, and I'm going to fast forward through this. Pick up my Wi-Fi, good. Let's make sure it connects. Yep, that's working. It's going to ask me to log into my account now. Uh, oh, okay. It's going to ask me to update the language first. I'm going to take a few seconds. Quick reboot. There's the green screen. Okay, now it should ask me to log into my account. Okay, that's working. It's logged into my account. And I think we're pretty much done. Just waiting for it to load up to the dashboard. Uh, no, Game Pass is a scam. And um, yep, there we go. So that does appear to be absolutely fine it doesn't appear to be banned i don't have a test disc because i keep snapping up my fever game and i don't have any more to hand so don't have a test disc that i can use but it should be absolutely fine and this console is pretty much done so yeah i'm gonna obviously give this a service make sure that it's all nice and clean ready for the next customer probably going to sell it on my online store rather than on ebay because yeah i don't really want to pay the ebay fees so i'm going to probably sell this on my online store i'll put it up for sale tomorrow but yeah it cost me a little bit more than i wanted it to cost in terms of parts the hdmi encoder was definitely bad and the hard drive again was bad so this hard drive here this is pretty much scrap it's no good it, it's working to a point but it's just, yeah it's, it's dead it needs to be scrapped so unfortunately it's cost a little bit more than i wanted it to it cost me 10 pounds for a hdmi encoder plus 
uh, like what, seven or eight pounds for a hard drive. Yes, I've changed the cable over to a Foxconn cable because I just think that the better. You know, these Amphenol cables absolutely suck. They always fail and I just don't trust them at all. Um, that was the one I took out of it actually, but yeah, I just don't trust them at all. So I'll just take them out. If they fail, I'll throw them away. If not, then I'll just, you know, I'll save them up until I've got like 50 and just job lock the thing off or something. There's some fool on eBay who wants to buy them. I don't trust them because I've had too many of them fail. But yeah, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. If you do want to organise a repair, check the website out in the video description, consolefix.shop. You can book in the repair, send it over, and I'll do my best to repair your device for you. Consoles, laptops, tablets, phones, doesn't matter what it is, get in touch and I'll try and help. You can also become a Patreon member if you want to support me. Links are in the de description to that. You can become a channel member by clicking on the join button below this video. And you can also become a Twitch Prime subscriber if you've got an Amazon Prime account and you want to link that to Twitch. And then subscribe subscribe to my channel absolutely free over there. I do live stream over on Twitch quite regularly, so be sure to check that out as well. There's also some support links in the video description. And as always, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. So with that being said, this console's fixed and I am a happy, happy bunny. Thank you for watching and until next time, see you later. Bye for now.